Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum is a gram positive, rod shaped, motile, spore forming, and anaerobic bacteria. This picture will help you to remember all these points. Here you can see this is a rod shaped. The plus sign on its eye will help you to remember that it is gram positive. The clip on the nose signifies that it is anaerobic. Tire signifies it is motile and the spores on the ground will help you to remember that it is spore forming bacteria. Clostridium botulinum is non-invasive and the pathogenesis is due to production of powerful neurotoxin which is called botulinum toxin. It is probably the most toxic substance known to be lethal to the mankind. Now let's discuss about the serotypes. Based on the light chain there are 8 serotypes. B, A, E, C1, C2, D, F, G. Among them, serotypes A, B, E commonly cause human diseases. You can remember it like B, B, A, E, your toxic B. Don't think about your B, it's just a mnemonic. All serotypes produces neurotoxin except C2, which produces an enterotoxin. Botulinum toxin types C and D are bacteriophage encoded. Here you can see bacteriophage is sitting on a CD. It will help you to remember this point. Now let's discuss about the mechanism of action. As we know, botulinum toxin produces flaccid paralysis and tetanus toxin produces spasticity. Let's see how it happens. Here this is nerve ending and this portion is neuromuscular junction. These are the vessels loaded with acetylcholine. When action potential comes, these vesicles fuse with the nerve membrane and release acetylcholine by exocytosis. This acetylcholine binds with the receptors present on the muscle fibers and help in muscle contraction. Now here you can see these are snare proteins. These proteins help the acetylcholine filled vesicles to fuse with the nerve membrane. Now botulinum toxin is taken up by the cholinergic nerve endings. Here one point you should remember that botulinum toxin is not taken up by the adrenergic nerve endings. It is only taken up by the cholinergic nerve endings. Now what they do into the nerve membrane? They proteolize or cut down the snare proteins. So the fusion of vesicle and nerve membrane will be hampered and there will be no exocytosis of acetylcholine. That is how botulinum toxin interfere with the nerve conduction and there will be flaccid paralysis. Now clinical features. You can remember the common symptoms with the simple mnemonic 5D which represents diplopia, dysphagia, dysarthria and descending symmetric flaccid paralysis and decreased deep tendon reflexes. Other symptoms like constipation and respiratory muscle paralysis which may lead to death even and there is no sensory or cognitive deficits. This point you should remember. Now let's discuss about the types of botulism. First is foodborne botulism, which results from consumption of foods contaminated with preformed botulinum toxin, which commonly due to consumption of homemade canned food. Then next is wound botulism, which results from contamination of the wounds with Clostridium botulinum spores. It presents like foodborne botulism except the absence of gastrointestinal features. Next is infant botulism, which is also called floppy baby syndrome. You can remember the features with this picture. It can cause dysarthria, which means difficulty or unclear articulation of speech, then tosis, dysphagia, and dyspnea. It is caused by ingestion of contaminated food, usually honey, with spores of Clostridium botulinum in children less than one year of age. Next is iatrogenic, which is result from injection of the overdose of toxin. Now some therapeutic uses. As botulinum toxin produces flaccid paralysis, it can be used therapeutically for the treatment of spasmodic conditions like strabismus, blepharosplasm and micronus that's all guys thank you for watching 
प्लीज डोंट फॉर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल